The fact that Taylor Swift is a billionaire has been confirmed. You have arrived at the Eras Tour. An event in and of itself, her Eras Tour is a celebration that brings in hundreds of millions of dollars. An extremely charming chief executive officer leads this international business, which has the most committed customer base in the world. There has never been a time when we have witnessed an artist sell out numerous stadium gigs in the same city. This is something that has never happened before. Step beyond the velvet rope into a world where luxury knows no bounds. Luxury Beyond Borders is your VIP access to stories of decadence, glamour, and the exceptional. Subscribe for tales that redefine luxury. The reason why Taylor has amassed a billion dollars is not solely due to the fact that her songs are popular. Rather, it is because of the numerous astute business choices that she has made over the course of her career. Although she is a superstar, Taylor Swift is not even close to being the first millionaire to come from the music industry. The scion of the record label, David Geffen, as well as Jay-Z, Rihanna, and Jimmy Buffett, who passed away, are just a few of the many notable individuals. Swift has made her fortune almost entirely from her music, in contrast to the other billionaires who have used their reputations as a basis for various economic pursuits. Her statements regarding the significance of exercising control over one's music and taking ownership of one's music as an artist have been quite frank and honest. With that being said, where exactly does her wealth originate? Let's begin with streaming, shall we? Let's discuss her affluence through streaming and Spotify. The recording business has experienced a rebound as a result of the advent of alternative streaming services such as Apple Music and Spotify. The entire amount of money she makes from streaming is estimated to be $175 million. It is obvious that this is not a number to be taken lightly. Nonetheless, one of the reasons why it is not higher is due to the manner in which royalties are allotted. In most cases, musicians do not have ownership of the masters of their music, but they do receive royalties from the music they do create. Generally speaking, the owners of the masters keep four-fifths of the royalties, while the holders of the copyright, who include the composers and lyricists, keep the remaining royalties. In light of this, Taylor has lately made a very astute economic decision by re-recording her albums and then acquiring ownership of the masters of those albums. It can be said that she is regaining some measure of control over her music through the process of re-recording. She is reclaiming ownership of it, but in doing so, she is also reducing the value of the masters of the first six albums that were initially released on the market. Swift also attacked the streamers themselves in an effort to win the battle. In 2014, Taylor Swift removed all of her music from Spotify without giving any explanation. She acted in this manner as a kind of protest against what she considered to be undue pay from the streamer. On account of this, she was able to gain an advantage when she renegotiated her prices in order to rejoin Spotify once more in 2017. Now, retail sales and advertising records. Additionally, she has done an excellent job of marketing the sale of physical albums online through various social media networks such as Twitter, Instagram, and others. Therefore, there is an incentive for fans to purchase physical recordings. By utilizing social media and establishing a connection with her fans, she has been able to get to know them on a more personal level, share information about herself, and build a sense of intimacy. As a result, she has developed a fan following that is extremely powerful and who feels a connection to her. Forbes estimates that Taylor Swift has generated a total of $125 million from album sales throughout the course of her career. During the course of the negotiation, she also made some very sound strategic decisions. Leaving her long-standing record company, Big Machine, in 2018, she embarked on a career as an independent artist. During the year 2018, she successfully negotiated a new contract with Universal Music Group that grants her the opportunity to receive a greater portion of the earnings. Luxury is a journey, not just a destination. By subscribing to Luxury Beyond Borders, you ensure you never miss a tale of elegance, glamour, and sophistication. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications for globetrotting adventures into unparalleled luxury. Let's get back to the video. Moving forward to purchases of concert tickets. It is without a doubt her concert income that constitutes the largest portion of her earnings. 
It is estimated that Taylor Swift's concerts have brought in a minimum of $1.6 billion, and this figure only accounts for ticket sales. Merchandising sales are not included. Since the year 2009, she has participated in a total of six tours. The Eras Tour is the most recent. It arrived just as everyone was pining away for live events to take place. People were beginning to recover from the pandemic, and they were eagerly anticipating the opportunity to get together in person and rejoice. On top of that, there are individuals who are prepared to pay anything and everything in order to get the opportunity to meet her. Unquestionably a lavish gift. But I have to carry it out. The only thing we've been doing is attempting to avoid mortgaging the house. Needless to say, she does not retain all of that money for herself. The amount of money that Taylor has made from touring throughout the years is approximately $500 million, which is approximately 35% of the total ticket sales. Streaming royalties, her tours, and the purchase of her records are all sources of revenue for her. Her recording catalog is one of the assets she possesses, among other things. First, there are the rights of the masters, and then there are the rights of the publishers. The term catalog refers to a compilation of songs that pertain to a single artist. Every time a song from this collection is played, a royalty is generated, and that royalty is then returned to the owner of the song. Swift does not, in fact, possess the first six albums that she has released in her discography. At the moment, a fund known as Shamrock Capital is its owner. Due to the fact that she is re-recording those albums, she will receive increased revenue from streaming services as well as a more valuable repertoire. Based on our estimation, the value of her catalog is approximately $400 million. Now let's talk about her estate holdings portfolio. Then, of course, there is the property that she actually owns. The properties in question include a condominium and an estate located in Nashville, an estate located in Los Angeles, a sizable apartment located in the Tribeca neighborhood of New York City, and a summer home located in Rhode Island. The Rhode Island property is intriguing due to the fact that it is not exactly representative of a usual hangout for celebrities or music stars. It's a part of the country that's a little bit of an old world with old money. However, it is somewhat consistent with Taylor Swift's vision of herself as the kind of girl who lives next door and is a little bit of a homebody. In fact, she has also hosted admirers at this location in the past and made them cookies that she had prepared herself at this property. Making large quantities of cookies using chocolate chips and coconut that has been roasted. A total of approximately $110 million is the worth of her properties. After deducting her expenses, taxes, and the charges of her staff, among other things, you arrive at a net worth of $1.1 billion. The year in question was a monumental one for Taylor Swift, one that catapulted her into a higher tier. However, considering that the 33-year-old artist has recently established a new record for concert films and that the international part of her tour is about to begin, it is possible that she is just getting started. As we wrap up our luxury journey, thanks for being part of the Luxury Beyond Borders community. If you enjoyed today's episode, show your love by hitting like and sharing with fellow luxury enthusiasts. Subscribe for more grand tales. And remember, the world of luxury awaits your return. Until next time, May your days be filled with elegance and indulgence.